It's been about 12 or 14 years ago that I was up in the mountains in Utah. And there was a truck on, on its way to a girls' camp. Buck Buck yeah. And um, the truck was on the wrong road, and he needed to turn around. And as he turned around, he backed down into a ditch. And so uh, didn't know how to get out. And this guy in a nice four-wheel drive truck came by with a chain that was attached to this link. And this truck stayed on the road and tried to, at right angles, pull out that truck that was stuck in the ditch. And it didn't work. In fact, the link broke. And we were trying to figure out how we were going to get that truck out of the ditch. Now, five minutes later or so, a Forest Service truck drove by. And in the truck was this old Utah Forest Service ranger. He knew what he was doing. And one thing he did, he got the chain that was broken, because the chain had hooks on both ends that we needed. And he took the chain and he tied it in a great big knot like this. And then he hooked the things up, the hooks up to the truck. But this time he did something very different. He didn't try to pull that truck out at a right angle. He went right in front of the truck and pulled straight out. And guess what happened? The truck came out. Now several things happened. The guy that was stuck got in and he did his part of the truck to come out. All of us that could tried to push, push the truck, and then that forest ranger pulled straight ahead. And there's several lessons that I got out of that. I always wondered, after we got the truck out, I looked down in the road, and there was this broken link. And I thought, someday, I'm going to need this. So I picked it up and put it in my pocket. And I've kept it all these years. Misplace it and find it, and misplace it and find it. So I want you to always think of this, broken wing. Now I want to talk about several lessons that I've learned from that. As we are up now pushing hand carts, if some of us are behind pushing, and some of us are in front pulling, but half of us are on the side pushing crosswise, what's going to happen? We're not going to go very far, are we? We all have to be going in the same direction, don't we? And that's what we have to do. That's why you're organized in the family, so, so that you can all pull in the same direction. Now, it's interesting, when I look at this chain that's in a knot, if we were to put this tied on the two John Deere tractors and pull, it probably wouldn't break where it's in a knot. It would probably break where there's a single link. So I want you to always remember, this is why our Heavenly Father has established families, because it puts us in a link, joined together in a knot, and it makes us stronger. This is why you have young women's classes. This is why you have your priesthood forums. This is why we have wards and stakes. It brings us together and makes us a lot stronger. And that helps to remind us to always be pulling in the same direction. And if we pull in the same direction, we're not going to break the chain. Now, I'm going to talk about the weakest link. We always have heard this story about the weakest link is the one that breaks. And in this case, the chain did break. And it's interesting, I don't think it broke where it was welded. But there's something called tensile strength. Steel and, and metal can only take so much strength. You know, my young friends, all of us, at some point in time in our lives, will be the weak link in a chain. No matter how strong we think we are, we're always going to be weak at some point in our life and need somebody else to strengthen us. Again, the reason for the not. That's one thing I really know about life. How many of you here are 11 years old? Anybody 11? 
Just one, two, couple. Stand up, there are 11. So I'll be the oldest. So sit down. So I can tell you that through life, you're going to go through an experience where you will feel that you're the weak link and you're going to break. And that's why I always remember you have a class or a quorum or a ward or a bishop or some young women's leader to help you out so that you can be in this knot so that you can be strong. And you know the wonderful thing about a chain like this? You can pull it tight and it just loosens up like that. And that's what happened when we pulled that truck out. As tight as we pulled, when we got done, that chain came, up, came out. We are always able to maintain our individuality, but we can always be strong when, when we're linked together. Now, second thing that I've learned out of this, and I think this is the most important. Uh, this is a corroded, broken, rusty link. It's not good for anything, is it? I didn't find the other piece that broke off so that we could weld it together. It's bent and it's twisted. That's how we become sometimes when we sin. And then I think of a beautiful, shiny link like this. It's shiny and whole and complete. This is what our Savior does for you and for me. He likes to fix things. He takes a broken link that's corroded and needs fixing and makes it shiny and bright. With one exception, this has a weld on the side of it. When the Savior fixes it, it's as if there was no weld. It's complete and whole, completely fixed. None of us have done anything bad enough so we can't be completely fixed and made bright and shiny like this. Chain, please. Now, President Leptic said something that I just love. He promised that you could all, if you wanted, have an experience with the person whose name you're going to go through <coughs> today on the track and for the rest of the week. That is so true. But I have learned in my life, and my wife and I were talking about this in the temple the other day, if we want to experience these kinds of experiences with the Spirit, we have to, number one, find a quiet time to do it. We have to want and have a strong desire to have that happen to us. We have to have the faith, and then we have to expect it to happen. And it will. Our Heavenly Father will give us that experience when we are ready for it and on His timetable. And as we learn that, those experiences will come and we will be blessed. And I know that each of you will have this kind of experience this week on the trek if you seek it out. Now, I want to ask that our Heavenly Father bless each one of you. personally, that as you're hot and sweaty and tired and hungry, you will grow, not only physically, but spiritually and mentally, that you will have an inward appreciation of what our hard pioneer ancestors went through. They are no different than you and I. No different. Same kind of people. Many of them came from nice homes and weren't used to the winds of Wyoming or the snows in the Rockies. They weren't used to it, but they did it because they had a testimony of the Savior. This trek, this rescue, will help rescue you 
and rescue others. It'll rescue the names for the people that we're going to be eventually going to the temple for. And it'll be a great blessing to them. I leave this blessing with you as you go forward, that you will be reverent and respectful, and respectful of your moms and pops and other leaders, that you'll be respectful of your brothers and sisters within your own family, that you will find peace and joy in this wonderful week that we have. And I leave this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The President just spoke to you about chain links. Before you leave, we're going to hand each of you a link of a chain. It's brand new and shiny. You're going to tie this right now onto your shoe, onto your shoelace. And all week long, you're going to have this with you, okay? So let's go ahead and start handing out the chain links. What? Maz and Paul, oh, yeah. When we're, when we're, oh, let's shh, 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 just, you don't have to make a lot of noise to do this. <coughs> Reverently tie this on your shoe, then you.